Hello, boys and girls, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode on developing with action. Jake, today I am bringing another special guest to you, Dom, previously known as the JavaScript Wiz. Now you can find him as Tech Wiz Dom on Instagram, TikTok, and other social medias. Dom and I discuss a few topics, namely how to break into the tech industry when you have little to no experience. And also we discuss his transition into content creation and some very timely and what I think really good advice for people looking to get into content creation as a form of income. I hope you enjoy this episode on developing with Action Jake. Dom, welcome to the show, my friend. So happy to have you on. I know we've got a lot to talk about. We got tech, we got content creation, and maybe even a little bit of magic. Um, I want to hop into the first question right away. So could you tell me what made you decide to pursue a career in tech and what drew you to that career field? 100%. Thank you, Jacob. I'm so glad to be here and so looking forward to our chats today. Uh, my story about coming to tech, I would say it is a bit unusual because I am originally from Croatia. Everybody here, usually a lot of people go to the college because the college is free. So I had to pick something. I picked computer science just because I was always interested in the technology, into maths, into, well, computers or anything. And honestly, I've heard a lot of things like, well, go to study computer science. You'll get a nice job. Money is good. So honestly, when I was, what, 17, 18, and when I needed to pick college, I was like, let's do computer science. Why not? And since I wasn't that aware of things back then as a, well, not teenager anymore, but with the mindset of a teenager, mm -hmm. I just said, well, let's do it. And that's, that's how it all started. I got a degree and then later, later got a job, but I'm sure we'll go to that later yeah so that was actually my follow-up question you you already answered it but i would like you to talk a little bit about it so you decided to get a degree you didn't go an alternative route um i i am curious if you know i'm, I'm curious about your experience doing that did um like if you were to do it all over again would you would you still choose that that um degree path um yeah, what was your experience like getting a four-year degree and then entering the job market? Well, actually, it was a five-year oh. degree because it lasts for five years here. And honestly, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it again just because, especially now with the rays of AI and with everything so easily available online, uh, especially after seeing so many people just finishing boot camps or even just like going through online courses and online materials and learning everything, getting jobs after a year or two, I would suggest that path much more. Only, I would suggest college only to people who, well, are definitely sure they want to get some sort of a degree and they're interested in technology then yes because they'll get some deeper knowledge that's sure but for people who want to break into tech from their other niches or they're already in their well mid late 20s let alone 30s i definitely don't suggest college because it's probably going to be extremely expensive it's going to take a long time and with this stage of market and ai we well, we just don't know what will happen in four or five years after they finish that college. No, yeah, that's such a good point. I mean, I think even you do see like software development four year, five year degree plans now. But, um, you know, I think of a field like web development, web development changes like on a week to week basis almost. You can't put 
a four year program together and it's like, okay, we're learning React. By the time you learn React, it's like React is old news. We're moving on to Vue, you know, or whatever. Um, so that that's a really interesting perspective, especially coming from you since you did go to university for computer science, you said, right? Uh, yeah. Computer science. Um, and I know you teach classes, you sell courses. So you've seen firsthand what it's like um, for other people to get into the field just from learning materials, not having, um, right, the, uh, the degree or the, you know, the, the degree on the wall, for example. Um, I'm curious, you know, what kind of advice you would give to people who maybe are in that situation. Like maybe they're thinking about a career pivot or maybe they're getting out of high school considering college and they're like, mm, do I go get a computer science degree? Do I go to a boot camp? Do I go to YouTube and learn? It, there's a lot of options now, and it's hard to say, like, what's the best? I don't know if you have any insight on that or not. Honestly, my, it's, a great, it's a great question, and it's really hard to answer it because it's just like so many people in so many contexts. But I would say that the ideal option is if people can afford it, a good boot camp, because then after six to nine months, they will really get everything they need. Uh, they will learn everything they need to get a real job. They will be a part of community where people learn, where people share, share things. They will have great mentors. They usually prepare them for getting the jobs and many boot camps actually guarantee money back if they don't get a job, I don't know, in one or six months or one year after they finish the bootcamp. So that's probably the best option. I know that some people cannot afford it because it costs like a few K, sometimes like 10 K even more. And I've seen a lot of like self-taught programmers. So I definitely suggest buying some course. Mm -hmm. Courses are pretty cheap online. You have courses on Udemy or Gumroad or many different platforms, you have courses for less than $100, I totally suggest that because going just over YouTube and random articles and videos and I don't know, uh, Twitter twi posts, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's way too much mess because the field is just so massive that people won't be able to catch everything and they might lose confidence because in it's often appear, like imposter syndrome appears quite early and you want to avoid it and you definitely don't need to listen things from 20 different teachers you just want one teacher who will teach you everything you need to know so i highly suggest um, a course or as i said other option is if you definitely if you sure if you are sure that you want to get a college degree then a college but it's gonna take a long time and it's probably gonna be expensive Totally. Yeah, man. I, I think you and I talked about this last time we spoke. Um, just a little background on me. I did get a four year degree, but I got my I majored in economics um, and it was, you know, soon after college, I was working in sales and I was like, I want to code, you know. And so I went I went back and uh, did a six month boot camp. And it's not like I threw my four year degree out. I mean, it was still relevant but i was learning something completely different than i went to uh, a four-year university for and to this day i say for sure for my career it was like the best decision i made and you do not have to get a four-year degree for that you can easily you know do a boot camp out of high school or if you're doing a career pivot you can you know you can do night classes and weekend classes for your boot camp while you're working your full-time job preparing to pivot and switch in your careers and so I couldn't agree uh, more for for that advice you're giving now you mentioned something that I know is um, a common issue in this field and in, in that you're you're kind of inundated with information it's like okay I want to learn how to code where do I begin I think what you say of like get a course make sure you have a good teacher and then just focus on whatever they're teaching you um, but you know, the question I have is just general advice for people who want to break into the tech industry and to add context to that 
for people who don't even know like where to begin, like where would you generally guide someone who's like, I want to learn how to code and they're not thinking about native versus web development um, or hardware development, et cetera. What, what would your advice be for them? Mm, also, also a great question. And I would maybe direct them to some social media platform like Twitter, because on Twitter, there's a lot of great knowledge shared, a lot of, well, anything related to tech or coding. And I would even suggest maybe asking questions there because people usually reply to tweets, even like big names on Twitter will reply to their tweets. So I would suggest maybe investigating a bit on Twitter or asking some of their friends who already code and just getting some advice from somewhere. Ideally, physical friends and friends in real life, but if they don't have them, well, they need to search for something online, which is nothing bad because like online communities are amazing. Maybe even Reddit, or they can literally just ask a question of Reddit. And if you ask a good question of, on Reddit, you'll always get great answers. Probably there are already many great answers there. But yeah, I would even suggest Louis, to uh, resume it in person, some friends who code or Reddit, Twitter, maybe all of that. Okay. I think that's really good advice. And I think the good thing about social media platforms like Twitter and Reddit is they're, they kind of have this self-moderating element where perhaps someone posts on there some, some information about coding, but it's bad information or it's wrong. People are going to downvote. And people are going to comment and be like, well, you know, you're mistaken. This is actually, this is correct. Um, Cause I, again, that's where my mind goes. Like if I were starting today in 2023, where the information age and disinformation age is that much bigger than it was, you know, six, seven years ago when I was beginning my career, you know, I'm just, my mind's like you, again, you get inundated and you're like, where do I begin and how do I know, how do I validate this information I'm getting? I'm being told, learn JavaScript. This, they're telling me, learn Python. What's the best? But anyway, that is why I think, again, I will, I will parrot what you're saying. Having a mentor um, and a really good teacher who can guide you through the process, because truly you don't know. Like, for example, I got into JavaScript when I joined my coding boot camp. I knew very little about JavaScript. If they had taught me Python in that coding bootcamp, today I would be a Python developer, you know? Um, so I kind of just took what they taught me as gospel and, and stuck with it. I'm, I was fortunate um, that JavaScript is just the language in web development and it's a highly sought after skill and I've just kind of doubled down on it. But um, I know for, for other people getting into it, they might not have that same experience. Um, I don't know if you had something to say. I can move on to the next question if you're ready for it. Um, yeah, maybe just to add to your experience, mm -hmm. how you touched on JavaScript first. Honestly, if you pick some language, I would say it should be JavaScript or maybe Python because they're just like really good languages for beginning and you can do so many things with them. And if you learn one language, then you can easily, not easily, but you can jump to some other field way easier than doing it from scratch. And I also believe that people, since the field is so massive and sometimes you just cannot know immediately what you want. You hear JavaScript, you hear Android and you hear iOS or AI and you, those are just like buzzwords, but in the end you need to try it out and see, yep. see how you like it. But everything you try you're gonna make the other thing you try way easier the first language that's gonna take weeks months years but the second language it's not gonna be that hard exactly like you don't know what you don't know and you, you know so you just like you say try things like try front-end development try back-end development try full stack development you know try ui design if you don't like it all Guess what? There's a million other, you know, directions you could go into the industry. Um, so that I love that information. I think that's all super helpful. So I, I want to switch back to you 
Um, this next question is about your tech career. So my question is, if you could maybe give us a little, a little more background, perhaps after you graduated school, what your experience was like getting a job and then progressing in your career. And then I know that you've since pivoted out of the tech industry and you're doing content creation full time now. Um, and you're more of an entrepreneur now, not working for other companies. I would like you to uh, talk about what uh, what led you to leave the tech industry and pursue these other endeavors. Hundred uh, percent. So everything started. I started working as a coder even when I was on the college, mm -hmm. just because the situation in Croatia was that that was the best computer science college in the country. And there were so many companies back then. It was like six, seven years ago. It was a tech boom, literally. And if you were on that college, you could have get a job immediately, like part-time student job as a programmer. So on my third, fourth year of college, I basically already started working part-time. So that's how I got, got into, in, into the industry. I know it's a bit different now, uh, definitely different times. That's how I got there. Uh, and then I was, well, progressing in that corporate world. I joined one of the best companies in the region of like Southeastern Europe. The company was amazing, but I always wanted something more. I had that goal in myself just to move out of Croatia, move to some different country. Then pursuing that, I moved to London to one really cool tech startup. I was working there and after approximately five years of my career in total, I quit my, I quit my job and went into content creation. Although I didn't go into content creation immediately. I was, and I like the more I was working for other companies, the more I just realized that I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. And that if I don't start building something on the side, well, that I will work for other companies for the rest of my life because nothing will magically change. Mm -hmm. Nothing will just enter my life overnight if I don't prepare for it. So I was just trying out different online businesses, I don't know, ghostwriting business, then some medium writings, then Twitter. Nothing especially worked because I honestly didn't like it that much so i put some effort but then i realized like but that's probably even if i'm big here i wouldn't love doing that mm -hmm. and then at one point i decided uh, i discovered content creation i started with tiktok i realized that that creative tech space on tiktok is so weak that well i can do something really good there my accounts were just growing then i moved to instagram to youtube and at one point that was after five, around five years in total of my career, I just quit my job and moved completely to content creation because I liked coding, but I just loved content even more. I realized that I can help people with tech coding, help them to learn, inspire them to break into tech, also make them laugh because a lot of my content is, uh, is quite funny. And, and I just realized that massive potential when you combine tech and creativity because we know those uh biases that uh well software engineers can be a bit introverted and definitely not creative but oh no dom you there yeah Sorry, I, uh, I think my internet went out just for a quick second, but you were saying uh, when you cut off software engineers, um, I think you were saying they're not super yeah. creative, something, something. Yeah. Like you, those software, those uh, kind of like biases about software engineering, it's, they're usually quite logical people, quite introverted mm -hmm. and everything at that it's changing recently, but it's still, it's still a thing that obviously you'll find more creative people in 
branches like fitness or travel or art or film, something like that. And that made tech space on social media really underdeveloped. So there's there was a lot of opportunity to do something there. And it's even now, honestly. So anyone who has some ideas for any sort of content creation or any anything to make extremely logical tech more creative i 100 percent support that because then it's really i would say needed Mm -hmm. that combination of tech and creativity but it's pretty unique because there's not so people so many people doing it yeah yeah i've noticed that a lot too especially on platforms like instagram and tiktok where short form content reigns supreme um I guess for whatever reason, tech isn't typically wrapped up as the sexiest content. So people are like, "Eh, I can do an eight hour JavaScript tutorial video on YouTube, but how am I going to compress that into like a 15 second, 60 second reel? Um, But dude, I've been following your content for a really long time. In fact, I just saw the post today and it was cracking me up and you make it entertaining. Like I want to watch your content. You know, I'm not... When I'm on the job, I'm always thinking, you know, I'm researching and learning, but like scrolling on Instagram, I'm in my free time. I'm like, the last thing I'm thinking about is like tech, but then your stuff comes up. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a great point. And it, you know, and then it gets my brain jogging of like, okay, I need to research this. So I totally see that. So for people that are listening that are looking for opportunities, short form tech content is still, um, very viable it's not like it's a a saturated uh, market at all even though there's tons of content creation out there Um, and TikTok interesting enough was the platform that you chose I'm I'm curious because I wasn't following you since the beginning obviously I'm curious what your like original content was on TikTok was it the JavaScript whiz posting uh, uh, posts that you're doing or was it uh, something different well, originally I started just with coding tutorials mm-hmm. and that didn't last. Uh, and my initial idea was not to show my face because of, well, insecurities. I wanted to hide behind camera because I'm, well, I'm not that strong. I don't want to put my face there and everything. But then I just quickly realized the huge potential of putting your face up there because people can relate with the account more. Uh, people just love to see human face and obviously there's way more things you can do with the content if you decide to put your face there uh so i kind of realized that that's my kind of like life spiritual lesson i need to learn there and i personally grew through social media because the more i was putting myself into social media the more people uh the more people and I like started to find out about my account. The less shame I felt, the I felt for me. I felt relieved every time somebody uh, found out about me. So it was like a really nice personal development journey through it. And I grew personally extremely. And I just realized that, well, I don't care. I just want to be myself doing things I love and I stopped care, stopped caring about other people's opinion or I care well or I care way less than I cared in the beginning but yeah it started with just coding tutorials then I started to add funny videos because I will always loved making jokes from throughout my whole life so I started doing that too and that's how it all started later I started doing funny videos way more just because they were going way better Mm -hmm. and people just wanted them more. And I realized I enjoy them more. I enjoy especially when I, even when I was recording that video, when I was editing it, it was just way funnier to, and way more fulfilling to do a funny video than to do a tutorial like video. So I was like, yeah, let's then go more into funny area because that's obviously what's what's calling me more and what i'm better at so let's focus on what i'm really good at so yeah don't know if that answers your no that 
For sure it does. And dude, I, I need to hear that because, um, you know, I've really only started posting content, at least in this format for like a year and just dude, getting my first post and I wasn't putting really my face out there. I was doing a carousel where I was providing information on Instagram and just getting myself to post that on my personal Instagram was such a challenge because all I could think about is who's following me, who's going to think about it. It's like, Oh, the, you know, you know, this girl that follows me, like, what is she going to think about me? Right. And like all those things are going to me. And sure enough, it's like I post it. A lot of people liked it. People were commenting on it and, you know, encouraging me like, Oh, I'm excited to see more of this. So it is amazing where we have these negative emotions like shame and guilt around putting ourselves out there. Um, but then when you do and you're vulnerable and it's like, like even right now, I don't have a perfect podcast set up. This isn't um, exactly where I want to be, but I'm growing through this experience. I'm learning how to become a better interviewer. I'm learning how to improve my setups. And, um, you know, and people witness that. People, when people can see an upward trajectory of wherever you started to where you are now, and they're like, oh, wow, this guy's like committed. Like he's serious about it. Like, they're going to take you, you know, they're, they're going to respect you a lot more and take you a lot more seriously. Um, so I love that too about your, your, uh, your funny posts. Cause that's exactly like my experience watching your content. Like, like today's, I remember today's post was about the girl calling you like, Hey, come over. What's your address? And you're giving your IP number like, no, what's your local address? And then you give your local, uh, your local IP number. And then no, your physical address, and then you give your Mac number, and uh, man, like, like as a as a coder, like that's that shit's hilarious. Um, but um, yeah, okay. So the other question, so you did answer my question of really like how you discovered your passion for content creation, and obviously how you developed the love for it was really you were creating content that you yeah. enjoy creating, right? Just to interrupt you here. Yes, please. About that part you said about vulnerability. Mm -hmm. These days, that's actually, I would say, a strength because it's not only about perfect content these days, about perfect setups, about perfect audio. I don't know. Like people just love to see what's happening behind the scenes. Like even right now, I don't have a perfect setup here. My hair is still a bit wet, wet because I, I washed it and it uh, didn't have time to dry. But people just love that. I'm not saying we should always aim for improving things and we should aim to have a better setup and everything but when we don't it's nothing bad people actually love to see that well every, we're, all, we're all we're all just real people with real vulnerabilities and we all have fears insecurities and everything and yeah the time of showing just perfection i think it's not it's not that trendy anymore what's happening behind the scenes is really important i love to i love to sometimes post well i create some content and then everything looks well perfect and just on that small frame on the camera everything looks ideal but then i show the wide angle and everything around it is well just mess because i'm creating content i i don't know i may be spilled some coffee there or there's like a pile of clothes on that side and but it's not visible in that like perfect frame but still people have to see like okay there's there's a mess it's just not that perfection every time dude totally i i love that, that vulnerability is what connects us to each other because it's like oh you know that example you have a pile of clothes like i'm messy like man i can't i can't keep my clothes clean i always have a pile of dirty clothes like and this guy's just like me. And it's like a tiny, that's a tiny little thing, but man, here's a, a connecting point. And then, and then it just grows from there. Oh, he's into tech, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I love that dude. Um, so that, that was my question I was moving to was when did you discover, like, when was the aha moment that content creation could be not just like a side hustle, but like your main source of income, what were you doing and like, what was your experience you had with that? Uh-oh. Sorry, Dom. 
Can you hear me? Oh, no worries. Um, not our. We're not the cause of it. <laughs> Say it again. Some engineer. Some engineers are the cause, but we're not the cause this one this <laughs> time. Yeah, this is our fault. Let me let me ask that question one more time. Um, so the question was, when did you discover content creation as a potential full time source of income, not just a side hustle? What was your experience with that? My experience was in the beginning, I just didn't know exactly how will I make money mm -hmm. from social media. I honestly, truly enjoyed creating content. I knew that at some point the money will start coming, but I just didn't know uh, how, how exactly. And I would say the biggest uh, turning point for me was when my Instagram exploded because I was first on TikTok. And at some point I started reposting my things on Instagram on TikTok. I was pretty decent. I had like 50 K followers. So I started posting on Instagram. Nothing was specially working. And in the first six months of Instagram, I got to 500 followers, but then one video just went completely viral. And after that, the, yeah, that video, I think got like five, 6 million views. And after that, the algorithm just started to love me and started to push my content like crazy, especially those funny videos. So mm -hmm. I was just posting those funny videos twice a day. And in one month, I grew from 500 followers to 100 K, which was a crazy, a crazy, crazy growth. And after it, like the momentum was crazy. I felt amazing. Then I got a deal offer, which was basically like 80% of my monthly salary back then. And I was like, okay, this is a sign. I really need to quit my job because this is a huge, huge potential. And also intuitively that decision, that decision was right. My intuition was telling me completely like, this is like, do it, like just do it without any explanations. Just, just do it. And I did it. And it just started well to go even, even better after that. Dude, I love that. Can you talk a little bit about what that offer was, what that deal was? Uh, that, so that deal was, uh, well, I'm not sure how many details can I, sh can I share right now just because of the deal, but it was a promotional, it was a promotional deal that I shared on all of my accounts, I think Instagram. YouTube and TikTok, and it consisted of one short form video on all the platforms, on sharing that video on stories and adding a clickable link there. And then I think we added one more short form video that. So yeah, those were two short form videos and two stories in total across all platforms. So yeah, that was... So that was the deal that changed, changed my mindset. Got it. Okay. So just for my own understanding, this was some sort of like marketing deal where they're using your platform and then you were like saying, Hey, whatever it is, like, um, you know, check this, this out on those short form. And then you had a link to their product page on your profile. Is that what it was? Hi, kind of. So those are those promotional videos people can see on well, all the platforms I would say because a lot of creators earn from promotional videos mm -hmm. and it goes creators make a deal with a brand in my case they usually make some deals with tech brands either like some coding tools productivity tools job boards mm -hmm. or something tech related and they want to promote their products over creators because if you do it over paid ads, well, people just don't love paid ads that much. So they just, they work, of course, but for their marketing purposes, they want to experiment with creators too. And quite often the results are just better because creators create content in their way. So when I post the promotional videos, it's in style of my content. So people just don't scroll away immediately because People don't love direct selling. And if you have direct selling through a paid ad, 
people just scroll away immediately. But if they see a creator they love, they'll just watch it even if they don't intend to buy it. But then because of them, the algorithm will push the video because they watch it. And in the end, it will come to people who will actually, uh, who will actually buy it. But usually it works in that way. And it's like a decent source of income for creators these days because other than YouTube and long form video, platforms just don't pay you almost anything for creating content. Right, right. And I was going to ask about that. So I'm wondering if this happened pre-deal or post-deal. I know you sell courses and that is a source of income for you as well. Were you already doing something like that as you were gaining traction and building your following? Or did that come later when you've already kind of grown your platform? That came that came later. Okay. And I I would suggest first focusing on just building the community, building some following, building that audience, and then later you experiment with uh, different digital or physical products because they take time. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you can focus on them and probably you'll spend a lot of time creating some products, but not so many people will buy it if you don't have too many followers. If you just want to use your like organic marketing channels, if you want to use paid ads, maybe. Honestly, I don't have too much experience with paid ads, so I won't, won't talk about it. But from my experience, I always focus just on building that community first. And then after I build it, now I can experiment with different physical and uh, digital products. Got it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You build the platform, you build the community, and then you can have a product uh, to sell. Um, and they're going to be much more, you know, privy to buying that product because they like you. And if you're selling something, they they like you. Like, all right, let's check it out. I'm, I've been following his coding content. I want to buy one of his coding courses. It, it makes sense. Um, 100% because then they already know you, they already trust you mm -hmm. and they actually want something like that. So I've seen throughout the journey, many comments, like, do you have any courses? Mm -hmm. This is amazing content uh, for coding. I love your explanations. Like people just want courses and then just fulfill their, their wishes. But in the beginning without paid ads, I would say it is. It can be it can be harder to to actually do it. Another great option for that is a newsletter. Mm -hmm. News email is really powerful. So I would also suggest to content creators to immediately start some newsletter because just when people get messages to their inbox every week or every two weeks or every once in a while where when you send them and you share valuable information and at the bottom you put some product you, you have after 10 20 times they'll maybe buy it but if they just see it once on social media the chances are way way lower got it no it makes sense okay so the other question i had was for someone who's interested in getting into content creation I, as a side hustle or perhaps as like a main source of income, do you have tips that you would like to share with them? Definitely. There are, there are a lot of biases about, about content creation. So first I, I suggest just removing those biases from head to day. They won't have enough ideas that they're afraid to put their face mm -hmm. in front of the camera. They don't have money for the equipment. All of the, all those are just biases that people need to go through. And it's normal to feel like that in the beginning. So first I would s tell to them just to try out and experiment and not care too much about some end results. They might have big dreams in their heads and that's perfectly fine but they shouldn't focus on building the big dream tomorrow they should just take the next step it's not important how will they get to 1 million followers and they don't need to know it and they can't know it because if they knew they would already do it so i would just suggest start and then figure out figure out on the way 
connect with people again like on some platforms like reddit or just like consume other content experiment with it post literally everything be consistent don't stop because social media in the end is you need to provide some value to people mm -hmm. and to find what that value is you need to experiment mm -hmm. and do that consistently over time and you'll find the right value the algorithm will start loving you and you'll uh, you'll make a success it's it might take some time because but social media that's a long-term game so i also say that people shouldn't expect crazy results in two weeks or one month maybe they'll get them who knows but Moreover, they should be ready to commit to some time frame. Honestly, when I started posting on TikTok, I committed myself to posting every single day. So once per day, indefinitely. And that was working. But if I was like, oh, maybe I'll post now and nothing for two weeks, nothing would have happened. So to, just to say maybe that's the most important sentence from here, provide value and to find what value is experiment and you're gonna find you're gonna find it for sure if that's for you got it no dude that's super helpful um you know you mentioned this and i'm curious if you could dive in a little deeper i i the the story in my head is like someone who wants to get into content creation but they don't know what to say so what's your how do you respond to that what would you tell someone who's like i really want to do it but like how do i don't have any value to provide what would you say to that well, they definitely need to find some niche. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like they cannot do, they cannot just randomly post things about anything. And they should look social media as a business. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you open, if you're trying to open a new coffee shop here, well, then you'll sell coffee, maybe something that goes with that coffee, like croissants or donuts, but you won't sell car tires mm -hmm. or fire extinguisher sure. because it's a completely different niche. So similar is with social media. They should, they should identify some niche. What do they want to speak about? And uh, then share everything they know about the, that niche. They can investigate, they can consume other content about that niche and then add their touch and convert it to their convert it to their content you can read books about those topics mm -hmm. and create create more content and usually i realize that nothing is too simple on social media when i was creating content about coding the simplest topics were actually the ones that got the most views because most people are beginners mm -hmm. there's not so many experts in that field so that is that is sometimes hard because as you grow in some field and you think like, oh, that thing I knew five years ago, now it's irrelevant, it's too basic, I won't even share it. But many people actually just want that because they're exactly that step, mm -hmm. uh, step to do that. And I would also suggest not thinking too much about having the ideas because you get more ideas when you start to create. And the ideas start to flow because you start to switch to that creator mindset. Mm. And the more you create, the more your ideas you will get. And everything will then, not everything, but things will start to associate you and give you ideas. I don't know. You will be reading a book and suddenly you'll see, oh, this is a nine sentence. I can make a piece of content out of it. Usually you would just pass through that paragraph, but now you have a content idea. So I was just suggest start and you'll have have more ideas don't wait for ideas start and then you'll get ideas totally and and you know i want to put this reminder out here like every human being is infinitely invaluable and i think we when it comes to content creation when when that story hits uh, hits us like oh i have nothing to provide value your perspective your experience can add so much value even if you're not an expert in that field so I think that wisdom of just starting, get yourself consistently in, in the creative process day to day if you can. And like you say, didn't it take you, you said six months to get 500 followers on Instagram before something went viral and then you got 100,000 followers? Yeah, so I mean, if that's not a testament, it 
clearly just takes time and um, consistency is key. Um, Hundred percent, and definitely, expertise is not needed. Most mm -hmm. people aren't experts, especially in tech. Some people just they just start their coding journey mm -hmm. and they share their coding journey. So their coding knowledge is basically non-existent mm -hmm. at the beginning, but they still inspire people. They are still one step ahead in, yeah. fr uh, in front of those people who want to break into tech and they will follow them. And to get a follow, you just need to be one step in front of other people. You don't need to be an expert 2000 steps in front. So just start and you, you will become expert by teaching because teaching is the best way to learn. I've learned so much about coding when I actually started to create coding content because you investigate everything. You just start to subscribe to every single newsletter, start reading articles, experimenting with things you would never experiment otherwise just because, well, you want cool ideas for content. Totally. Yeah, that surface level knowledge you had that got you by in the job isn't going to cut it when you're teaching a beginner and you need to know the the topic inside and out so you can at least try and provide some sort of value for them um i've learned that myself you know mentoring people on the job it's like oh wow before i teach this i need to go understand this a little bit more deeper before i just kind of give my hodgepodge of knowledge that i have over the subject um so the last question i have for you dom is where can people find you? And if you have any closing thoughts you would like to share with the listeners, feel free. 100%. So they can find me on Instagram. I would say that's my main platform right now under handle tech wisdom, wisdom with double Z uh, instead of S. And well, there. I share a lot of stuff about tech and I like my fields are tech content creation and also just, well, I have other accounts where I, where I share things about more how I build my reality, something like a personal brand where I just want to help people to build lives of their dreams because content and tech, it's not for everyone. And I just want to help people to find what's actually for them. Because you hear amazing stories about con successful content creators, successful software engineers, successful dropshippers, whatever. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's not for you. Maybe you want something completely different. So I also want to share that knowledge to to reach even broader, even broader audience. And yeah, basically everything everything is there everything is linked so i'm sure people people will find that and i would love to say thank you for for all the questions and everything i i really i really enjoyed our chats same and thanks yes thanks for hosting this it was it was just a pleasure speaking to you absolutely man the pleasure is mine and i'll definitely link um, both of those accounts tech wisdom and your personal which you know i started following recently and i've been loving that's actually how we connected so um i'll certainly link both of those and um you know until next time thanks everybody for listening we'll catch you on the next one see you thanks everyone for listening hope you got valuable things here awesome same all right see y'all